good to see you. I'm brushing my hair just like you. That's what you get for wearing my suit. I have a new do. It's Monday. Let's get after it. It's hump day. What do you say? Let's get after it. It's my birthday. Not bad for 61. Let's get after it. What the hell is it? <laughs> Yes, yes. All right, all right, all right. So, how was your week? Anything good happen? Anything happen at all? I mean, talk about a... Slow Newsweek with Greg Gutfeld. Uh, <laughs> slow Newsweek. I think it's the first one since November 2016. It's weird. It's like we put the apocalypse on pause. <laughs> What does the media do then? They talk about themselves. Here's the New York Times writer, Thomas Friedman. <laughs> that was the wrong tape. Anyway, in the, in the paper, Friedman said that the media should stop reporting on stuff like the strong economy and focus on Trump's personality. Doing so would then encourage Republicans to ditch Trump, and that helps the Democrats. He wrote, quote, the whole country needs to see every tweet, every rally, every word, and every reaction so that they can ask themselves, is this who I want my kids to see as our president? Hilarious. So Tom is telling the press to do what they're already doing. <laughs> He's basically telling the morbidly obese to eat another pie. <laughs> I'm not even done. He's telling his wasted frat buddy to do another shot. He's telling a car starter for the mob to make worse lifestyle choices. <laughs> do you remember what happened the last time the media covered every tweet, rally, and reaction of Donald Trump? They elected the guy. <laughs> like that. There you go. It's like Friedman just got diarrhea from Chipotle. And he says, well, that sucked. I'll have seconds. Because, you know, there was a pile of candidates and the media only saw Trump. So it's their fault. They figured Trump was a joke to play on the public, but that joke kicked their ass. So the media continues looking for that holy grail that destroys him. But where would they be once they find it? Because, see, to CNN, Trump is a potato. A food you can make a thousand different dishes out of. CNN will do seven courses in a row. Masked Trump. Twice baked Trump. Scallop Trump. Trump a gratin. I get fat just thinking about it. Yet the more you damn the guy, the better he gets. And the haters still suffer. Like the guy who destroyed Trump's star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Libs love that. Now some conservative artists made a bunch of fake Trump stars and stuck them all over. I'm proud. That's hilarious. But what's, what's more hilarious? A conservative artist. It, it makes no sense. It's like sexy Birkenstocks. Or a fresh smelling cab. Or an appealing Bill de Blasio. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, he's like Lurch minus the charm. <clears throat> you know, he did an interview with The Guardian. The Guardian is a newspaper, meaning like de Blasio, it's also made from wood. <laughs> he, he said, uh, trees, wood. If, uh, he said, if you could remove News Corp from the last 25 years of American history, we would be a more unified country. So de Blasio thinks America would be better off without us. Translation, please stop making fun of me. <laughs> Sorry, it's not happening. <laughs> Bill. Bill. Hey, applause. Free applause joke. Bill, you're 10 feet a moron packed in a 7-foot body. <laughs> if bad ideas were tiny liquor bottles, you'd be the world's greatest minibar. <laughs> Bill's so stiff, John Kerry tells him to loosen up. <laughs> Bill's so stiff, every time he looks in the mirror, he sees an open casket. <laughs>
Thank you. <laughs> Meanwhile, in a CNN op-ed, a professor said that if you thank soldiers, you should also do the same for Jim Acosta, Chris Cuomo, and the rest of the cast of CNN Island. He wrote, we thank soldiers for their service because they devote themselves to protecting our freedoms. And we should, but we should also thank the media for the same reason. Now, I would agree if you're talking about war correspondents, those folks actually do risk their lives. But I don't think that's what this guy meant. I think he meant the people covering those evil Trump rallies. And maybe he's right. What the media needs is a recruitment video. <laughs> Looking for an exciting line of work where you can meet loads of average people and mix with important power players like Brian Stelter, Joe Scarborough, and Greg Gutfeld? A job that offers great perks, free travel, and hotel minibars fresh with tiny liquor bottles and single serving cans of Pringles you won't remember eating because it was late and you were drunk? For free? Because you'll expense it. Then join the media. It's the only profession you can do. Hung over. That's right. Lecturing America about the evils of Donald Trump. It's not like operating a forklift or performing surgery on animals or children. In cable news, all you have to do is stare intently and talk and care. Definitely care. Which means, with a job like this, you can get wasted the night before. You can work on a few hours sleep. You can feel like throwing up all day. You can show up stinking of bourbon and breath mints. You can wear the same shirt two days in a row and sleep in the company janitorial closet. So join the media where the only heavy lifting is a microphone in your ego. Yes! It's true, it's true. I mean... Why do you think I got into this line of work? For the free makeup? I like a drink, okay? So in the mornings, I'm Satan with hemorrhoids. I'm miserable and stupid. I should never be near heavy machinery, and no life should be in my hands. So I became a TV host. And my, how it's paid off. I get recognized in public bathrooms, which, is, which has killed my sex life. Period. You hated that joke. Let's welcome tonight's guest. By night, he's a comedian, and by day, he's a guy telling people he's a comedian. His new album is called Three's Comedy, writer and comedian Joe DeVito. If Muppets made puppets of people, you'd have comedian Joe Mackey. Look at him. Huh? She sleeps on bird feathers because she loves feeling down. <laughs> National Review reporter Kat Timpf. <laughs> He's never won a game of limbo. Former WWE superstar, massive sidekick Tyrus. Yeah! All right. Joe, welcome to the program. Still haven't shaved that weird beard, but that's okay. Um, does this hurt Trump? Does this affect him? Does it bother him, all this criticism? Oh, if there's one thing he hates, it's being in the news. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he cannot tolerate being the comp topic of conversation for people. It goes to show you that Friedman is still, he's calling plays from a, a game that they're not playing anymore. Right. It, it, Trump is above all of this stuff because you can't catch him on the things they used to try and catch people on. Yes. And this idea that... Um, that the media, that they're somehow being, uh, this is a threat to the First Amendment. Mm. It, even in their coverage of this, they're still slanted. <laughs> yeah. Because Trump doesn't say, I'm against the free press. Mm. He says, I'm against the fake news in the right. free press. Right. He says, I'm against the biased coverage. He doesn't say, I'm against coverage. Mm -hmm. And there's a big difference in that. And the problem is the media can't see it because they're so close to it. And they really do think they're battlefield heroes, which they most certainly are not. Yeah, they're trapped in a snow globe. And they can't see out of it. That's what I think. Uh, Mackey, what's in your brain right now? Well, I'm going to echo Joe here. I think that saying that the media is like the military is the... That's the Pearl Harbor of bad comparisons right there. <laughs> and, and everybody's taking these internet death threats too seriously because, I mean, if you're going to kill someone, you don't, you don't tell them in advance. <laughs> But, I mean, it's ju we're just not as important as we think we are. Mm. President Obama criticized Fox News and no one's attacking Tyrus. <laughs> if they do, if they do, I got his back. And, and 
If they attack me, Tyrus has my back. Uh, And I, I, Tyrus, I do believe that is a fair trade that he has your back. Yeah, like he's got to keep score count bodies in the alibi. Yes, exactly. He's going to talk to the police. Yes. What are your thoughts on the media and uh, and how it's going so far? You know what, man? Uh, <laughs> ugh, I, I didn't study. Hold on. <laughs> ah. Ah, where are we now? Sorry, excuse me. Yeah. It's good. You guys check it out. Um, <laughs> It's getting to that part of the fight where the corner is telling him, do you guys want to go out there? Like, I'll, I'll call it, baby. I'll pull, throw the towel. Yes. No, Mick, don't cut me, Mick. I got one more in me. Like, this is really the media has come down to, we're going to do more coverage. Yes. We got to do more. <laughs> yes. Like, that's what it is. Because, mm-hmm. and he is, he is probably, I mean, I like the camera and the lights. President Trump loves the camera and the lights. I think I think if it was socially acceptable, he would marry a camera and lights. He would literally be with him. He enjoys this. Yeah. And the best and one of the things about him, he will say the worst wrong thing mm-hmm. on Tuesday. Yeah. And he'll outdo that by Tuesday. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, that's true. Yeah, you can't keep up. Yeah. Yeah. He turn he actually he can turn a gap into like a successful a success. It's he'll make amazing. you famous. I would have never known who this reporter is if it wasn't for President Trump. <laughs> he it. is making media people famous. That's true. They've become part of the story, which is against supposedly what their creed is all about. Yeah. Kat, what do you make of the uh, commentary that uh, you should thank the media, the public should thank the media, especially in these times under Trump? I just could not understand the military comparison mm-hmm. because I am in the media. <laughs> And I am not a military caliber person. No, you're not. I have never successfully done a (laughs) push-up. Every time I've ever had to take a cold shower, I've behaved as though I've been personally victimized by the world. (laughs) The only fighting I've ever done has been via text message. Yeah, it's true. Um, The military risk their lives to protect our freedoms. I sit in a climate-controlled building, get my hair and makeup done, put a dress on, and talk about stuff. <laughs> yeah. It's not the same. No, it's not. <laughs> I do like I, I, the Walk of Fame story. I love it because it's, it, it seems like there's a change among r- young conservatives. They're actually doing merry prankster stuff, and there are actually conservative artists. I made fun of it, but they actually, there are that. They're out there, and that's, that's new, I think. They're normal people, and what a yeah. great way to yeah. handle that situation, because what, we, what would be assumed is they'd grab a sledgehammer and go start mashing up yeah. some liberal stars, yeah. and they didn't do that. No, they, oh, and uh, one more thing about your military thing. There's no retakes out on the battlefield. There's no retakes. Like, yeah. sorry, guys, cut, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Let's do this again. The lighting was wrong. It was off. Yeah, I, I shot. It, yeah, moved. it's always live. It's always live. There's yeah. no retakes. Yeah. You know? <laughs> all right, coming up, which Hollywood star should run against Trump? Why not all of them? Yes! 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 Well, instead of moving to Canada like they promised, (laughs) our our nation's precious celebrities are still here, and although it's been 641 days since Trump was elected president, well, he should not be president. Well, he should not be president, and I don't believe that he's a legitimate president. I believe if it wasn't for Russia, he never would have won. Mm, right, because Russia kept Hillary from campaigning in Wisconsin and Michigan and Pennsylvania. And then there's my favorite meathead. This habit that he has of going on uh, and talking as this guy John Barron or one of these other characters, I thought to myself, this guy is certifiably insane. Who do you know? that gets on a phone and pretends to be somebody else on this kind of level and talks to a journalist to get information out. That's insane. We are having uh, an experience with a guy who lies all the time. Constantly. Constantly lies and is lying right to our face. He he reminds me of Wooly Willy. Do you know what that is? A little thing you draw the beard on. Anyway. Yeah, now you know. Anyway, unlike all those honest people in Hollywood, Ron, spare me the pearl clutching. Anyway, 
There's good news for these two. Trump's almost halfway through his term, so you can keep bitching about him while he continues to grow the economy and keep peace in the world. Or maybe one of you would like to run against him. In 2016, it wasn't their time. United States of America, Donald But with his victory, did Donald Trump pave the way for the next outspoken former TV host to rise to the highest political office in the land? In 2020, the Democrats will unleash a new candidate, an innovator, a visionary, a hero for the working class. Her name, Rosie O'Donnell. This fresh-faced ingenue has all the great qualities you'd want in a leader. She's conspiratorial. He pays people to show up at right, those but I rallies. Don't. Those are not real rallies. She's armed with a clear and simple message. He lies! He lies! He lies! He lies! And she'll have no problem standing up to Vladimir Putin because she already speaks Russian. Yet! Yet! So vote Rosie O'Donnell in 2020, the household name that no one's talking about. And once you meet her scrappy running mate, you'll be running to the voting booth. Oh, 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 get up! <laughs> um, yeah. Hey. Mackie, what do you make of this idea? Anything? Uh, well, Rosie said Trump is a terrible person with no soul. That sounds like something Trump would tweet about. Rosie O'Donnell, so she's got the experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that uh, any other thoughts about the what the, the, the what the Democrats would do? Anything? It just seems like every time I see an actor on MSNBC, they're complaining about the president. It's not an award show. <laughs> Very, it's right. MSNBC is actually just like the Oscars, which we'll be talking about later in the show. Cat, um, looking ahead, is this is this? Do you see this happening? I would love that matchup because Rosie O'Donnell is kind of like the Trump of the left in a lot of right, ways. Yeah. I mean, she has the celebrity power. She doesn't have any political experience. Mm. She also loves to get into fights on Twitter. Right. I got into a fight with her on Twitter. Oh, I remember, yeah. All I, all I did was say on Fox and Friends that she should take a bath. Yup. I, I, yep. I said, yep. I said to relax. I to said relax. take a bath to relax, but she just saw the take a bath part and got real mad at oh, me. Oh, she was heated. I, I jumped yeah. in. Remember, because I was like, hashtag bubbles? Yeah, I just yeah. was like, I, lo I was like, I loved you and Harriet the Spy. Like, I didn't know what else to say. Yeah. I did love her and Harriet the Spy. But, I mean, her and Trump would just be fighting on Twitter all day long. We wouldn't even need to have debates. No. It would be constant. No, I think it's, I, I, I don't know. I think it's, a gr she, okay, Trump won, Tyrus, because of the contrast theory. There were 17 guy, people that looked exactly the same. Don't get don't my book. I don't know if that's up. true. Let me look. No, but wait, it's in my book. And so Did you Trump guys meet about this beforehand. What? Did you meet about no, this beforehand? No, I ordered like three of these books, so I'm okay. going to use them. I had to okay. pay for mine. Yeah, but not, let me get. So my... I'm going to use them. This is about something. <laughs> okay, Trump won because he was so different. He was a singular, different candidate from all the others. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Rosie. They're going to have 17 Democrats and Rosie, and she's going to get a plurality, just the way Trump did. Does that make sense? Sure. <laughs> if there's any any group deserving of destructive wrath, it's the de yeah. Actually, makes perfect sense. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, uh, here's a, th this is the problem. Listen, she can't run for the Democratic Party. Why not? Because she's crass, she's rude, and they don't like that. So if if she says makes. If she talks about his hair, his mama, his, if she fat shames him, she better not. But I'm just saying, if she does those things, they're going to ask her to step down. Really? I don't yeah, know. the PC no. police, that's, that's what they do. Like, yeah, he should just... How many, how many Democrats who have said or maybe been alleged of, done, of doing something are no longer here? Mm -hmm. yeah. Republicans, we just, do, go ahead, prove it. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. And even if they prove it, like, prove it again. <laughs> You can't run. He has no rules. Yeah. He has no handcuffs. Yeah, that's they true. They have 50 shades of lockdown on the Democratic Party. You know what? I, be I bet he does have handcuffs. <laughs> yeah, but he, yeah, but he'd be like this. Hey, you got to, you get a little older, you got to spice things up. <laughs> Joe, <laughs> your thoughts. Uh, I think, uh, at first I thought it was nice to see an anti-Trump protest where they were singing show tunes instead of smashing windows yeah. and uh, hitting people with bike locks. <laughs> but then I thought, show tunes, maybe this is actually worse what they're doing. <laughs> <than attacking people. laughs>
Uh, yeah, they don't seem to understand that the presidency isn't, isn't decided by who they like, who they think is legitimate. Mm -hmm. We have a system in place. We had an election. The results came in, and just because they didn't like it, there's this whole idea of he's not my president. No one cares. Yeah. There's no office of your president. Mm -hmm. There is the president, and if they have a problem with it, they should remember. <laughs> that's it. Try again. Yeah. You don't like it. I, no, that's... Uh... That was I always yeah. said that to like the the the, the heaviest critics mm. of Obama is that like okay number one he's still your president and number two if you don't like it next time win the White House it's somebody better yeah, yeah. and yeah. if you recall who was it who tried to trick him by saying will you respect the results of the election <laughs> they were so sure they were going to win and as soon as they lost they said well it must be because of Russian inter yeah. could, could there be a worse person to pick as a spy yeah. someone who really keeps a low profile. <laughs> Someone puts their name on buildings. Maybe yeah. that's not conspicuous. Yes, that's so true. Yeah, very good point. All right. There are, I think their other problem is that they're embracing very old ideas because they can't find new ones. They're like searching under the cushions of their couches, and all they're finding is like an old fuzzy tums. You mean Bernie Sanders? That's exactly yes. what it is. <laughs> There you go. Still to come, a segment on online dating. How's that for a tease? Do threes go for nines when dating online? A new study from the University of Michigan, whatever that is, finds that most people who use online dating sites, they seek partners who are out of their league. Apparently, both men and women pursue people about 25% more desirable than themselves. <laughs> Which I can't do. <laughs> Find someone 25% more desirable than this? Good luck. <laughs> people also send lengthier messages. <laughs> So you send longer messages as the desirability of the other person rises, which could explain why Killmead sends me 50-page emails. <laughs> creepy, creepy stalker. Still, perseverance pays off, says one researcher. Over 20% of people who aim high get replies from a mate who is out of their league. Makes sense, right, Jake? Here's Whoa, lighten up there, Jake. <laughs> Should have called him the next day. All right, cats. Don't know what that means. You don't do online dating, but you do get very long letters from prison inmates. <laughs> if they shorten their letters, would you consider dating them? I am alone. <laughs> I think thought this study was interesting because I actually prefer to date below my league. I noticed. Because I am a nightmare and only <laughs> p people below my league will put up with it. <laughs> like nobody, honestly though, nobody in or above my league is going to put up with me asking him if he's dead every time he takes longer than five minutes to respond to one of my text messages. <laughs> I think dating in general is just kind of dumb. Oh, really? You just like sit there in this dark room eating chicken and like <laughs> that's supposed to help you decide if you maybe want to spend the rest of your life with them someday. <laughs> How does he asking questions like, oh, where are you from? And like, what do you do? And like, tell me more about your mother, please. It's so interesting. I. <laughs> I don't know how I only have one cat. I don't know. <laughs> I don't either. And the poor cats. Yeah. Uh, uh, Tyrus, do you have any advice for people? I'm so afraid right now. Wow. <laughs> wow, man. It's, it's that bad out there, huh? <laughs> yes. Bad, yeah. You know, uh, uh, here's the thing about internet dating from my limited experience with it. Because uh, I'm, I'm a hunter. I'd rather be out in the field and fail miserably. Yeah. You know? <laughs> It just feels better when you get dissed in person than... Mm -hmm. But everyone lies on the internet. Like, every, every, most, every woman's picture is like from her when she peaked. Typically, like she's, like, she's 18 in the cheerleader phenomenal suit, and she's 37 and on the wrong side of wrinkles. And, but then what's the... What and, but the guys are even worse because right. they do the same exact thing. Yes. Like, they'll do a bicep pose, but they're pushing it up here, and it's very close, angled. You know, like they... 
And if you can't get somebody in real in the really real world, so why not go for broke? Yeah. You know, why not lie? I mean, you're lying yourself on the internet all the time anyways, so why not go for the, the 10 in the pitcher? What do you got to lose? You, no, it's true. You can't play. You're not playing. You know, you're not in the league anyways. Yeah. You know what? Uh, um, uh, DeVito, every man, I think, is out of his league, right? Isn't yeah. it pretty much the case because we're just... We're delusional. We're delusional, awful yeah. creatures. Yeah. You know, I, I'm interested to hear... Cat uh, talk about this date in the dark room when there's chicken. I, 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 I didn't know there was chicken available. Yes, I didn't know about the dark room. Yeah, of course, who goes online to go lower than your league? That's right. why you do anything online. Yes. You don't, you don't contact Amazon to say, can you give me less of a selection and have it here longer than it takes? That's why you go online. But uh, Tyrus makes a good point. I, I saw one woman, because I've done the online dating, and she had scanned in a Polaroid. It's a technology they don't even make it. Right. <laughs> But, you know what, just thinking about it, if you did go below your league, you'd have a really high success rate. Mm. So, fellas... <laughs> you would think! You would think, yeah. <laughs> You know? Let's, let's, let's Maybe a handful of three and fours, you put them together, it's yeah. twelve. Let's need to find success. Yeah. What about, uh, Joe, I, do you online date, Mackie? Uh, I have in the past. You saved the expert for last. That was smart. <laughs> <laughs> that is right. The dating world is tough out there, especially first dates. You're sitting there across from the stranger you barely know, having a forced, awkward conversation mm -hmm. after I already told her I loved her. <laughs> <laughs> but this... This study's on the money because uh, uh, when I was online dating, most of the women that would write me were aspiring models. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Joe's got a point, too. Who, who doesn't try to overachieve when they're dating? I mean, if you don't try to overachieve, what the heck was the point of Seabiscuit? <laughs> <laughs> Great <Yeah. laughs> who, who I dated for three and a half weeks. <laughs> well, well, oh, my God. I mean, what, I mean, we've all seen Catfish, right? Yeah. yeah. Every time they get dissed, they're clearly overachieving. No, it's true. It's true. A completely unattractive person is trying to find out if the, mo the the fitness model is really the one telling them that she loves him at night. And it's ne it never is. It never, it never is. is. It's always like his cousin. But I, I will say this. <laughs> it's always the cousin. You know, I've, I have met a lot of couples who have found love online. I have. I've also found couples online that you'll never hear from again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is a gamble. It is a gamble. All right, up next, big changes to the next Academy Awards show. Hope they bring back the swimsuit competition. <laughs> All aboard for a new award. The Motion Picture Academy is announcing some changes to liven up the Oscars. First, all of the nominees who don't win will lose a finger. <laughs> but also, they're adding a new award category to honor the best popular film. Because let's face it, the artsy, important films always win, even though no one goes to see them. And maybe that's why people have stopped watching the Oscars. So now they're going to give an award to a film that's a popular favorite. In other words, E.T. can now win in a Gandhi, Gandhi, Gandhi year, almost a Gandhi, and uh, Jerry Maguire might have won instead of English Patient. Maybe even this could get a statue. <laughs> That is cin cinematic, cinematic genius. And Tyrus, before you say that was me. <laughs> no way, that little dude was athletic. No way. Oh, you are an... I know. Why do, we, oh, why do I what? deserve this? Um, you're a legitimate actor. Um, is this a necessary business move? Uh, you know what? I, up until I, I actually have a biography... Mm -hmm pick I'm doing, yeah. where like you can get an award for it, so I love the Oscars this year. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, maybe the year for it. I think this is one of those things where it, I think times have changed, people have changed, everyone gets, there's so many awards, it's just not prestigious anymore, and the movies that we see and enjoy and do all the big numbers are not, you know, Harry Met Sally and all that kind of stuff, so this, is gonna, like, this will give Marvel and some of the big sci-fi movies and stuff an award to try to appease, maybe bring those fans in, but I don't think it will work. Mm, what do you think, DeVito? 
I hate. By the way, you shows. look like a, a movie critic, just so you know. <laughs> I know it stinks. <laughs> it's, uh, I hate award shows because I don't see the. Why would I want to watch rich, famous people applaud each other? Right. But it's that wasn't enough. Now <laughs> they they already have the most popular award. It's called "You Made a Lot of Money." <laughs> so now we don't need to see them actually get handed the right. giant bags of money. Yeah. Because what's the point then? The awards are supposed to be for a movie about someone with one leg who learns to play the cello or some nonsense yeah. like that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you think, Kat? I think I wish they would have had this in 1997 when the greatest movie of all time was robbed. Which one? Happy Gilmore. Oh, I... It wa The movie has everything. It has love, it has hockey, mm -hmm. it has a wise old man named Chubbs, you know? I mean, I, every movie that I've ever seen since I saw Happy Gilmore is just paled in comparison. Yeah. Every time I'm watching it, I'm like, why am I not watching Happy Gilmore for the 4,675th time? Um, so if we could go back yes, and give this award to Happy Gilmore, then I would stop boycotting the Oscars. You know, that's a great idea. I boycott because they snubbed Happy Gilmore, well, just to be clear. The Oscars should be every, they should have the Happy Gilmore Award, mm -hmm. and every year they give it to Happy Gilmore. Yeah. There you go. I was like that with Holly Berry yes. at Monsters Ball. I thought she should have got it two years in a row. Yeah. Because, I mean, <laughs> damn. If y'all ain't seen, there's no kids, right? Yeah, Monsters <laughs> Ball, check it out. Like, she should have got it two years in a row. What, Joe, Mackey, thoughts? Uh, I think they should add some more categories. Uh, best sequel. <laughs> best reboot and least original idea. Because if you're... If you're saying to people they're too bored to watch this four-hour show, so we're only going to make it three hours, that's still a long time to watch something that's boring. I think it were to be the best movie you don't regret starting. Because isn't that what we do now at home? Because we have all these options on demand, and you feel like, I got all this stuff, one of these must be good. And then you start watching it, and you just go, what am I doing? But you won't turn it off. No, because you have to finish you it. You have to finish it. It's like it. a bad relationship. You it, yes. It's, it. <laughs> I was gonna say, it's like a tub of Ben and Jerry's. Once you're like halfway there, you're like, ah, screw it. I'm going to keep going. You have to, yeah. I got to see the bottom. I got to see the bottom. <laughs> I say that a lot. Up next. I don't even know what that means. I, I do a lot of deep sea diving. A new movement by potheads to clean up trash on their smoke breaks. That's what I call a grassroots initiative. Boom! They're smoking hash, then picking up trash. An online community of pot smokers, is there any other kind, has created an anti-litter initiative with the simple goal of cleaning up their favorite outdoor smoke spots. And all while being more baked than your grandma's peanut butter cookies. <laughs> it started on something called reddit.com, I haven't heard of that before, uh, under the hashtag stoner cleanup initiative. <laughs> now users are enthusiastic, uh, enthusiastic, I don't even know what that word is, enthusiastically sharing their stories of cleaning up everything from beaches to public parks and campsites. If they could only remove the garbage from my soul. <laughs> For more, let's go live to our intern Carl, who's taken out the trash at my house. Well, he's fired, unless he's dead. All right, I think this is a great idea, Mackie. I think it's a great idea as long as you don't take it too far. Don't go using meth and then, you know, volunteering with kids. Yes. But what I don't understand is if, if you smoke weed and then you, you want to volunteer, that's a terrible drug. <laughs> Well, imagine how bad beer commercials would be if you helped people when you got drunk. <laughs> yeah, that's actually, uh... <laughs> You're supposed to be on a dog in a pool and... <laughs> yes. I don't, I, don't I don't know what else. That is, Kat, it's interesting, though. It's like, I have a feeling the irony is stoned people will be picking up litter from drunk people. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I saw all, all those pictures, and it was all just bags with liquor bottles in them. 
<laughs> and I saw those pictures too, and I thought, wow, this would be literally impossible in New York City mm -hmm. because the entire thing is just made of garbage. Right, that's true. You see garbage, you smell. It's true. Have you been out on the street at all? <laughs> You sound like Travis it's, Bickle. It's I don't know who that is, Greg. I have my youth. Taxi driver. <laughs> but I, I, you'd have to have like actual dump trucks, like yeah, fleet, yeah. like fleets of stoners with dump trucks picking up all the trash off the sidewalk, and like fleets of fleets of stoners with dump trucks doesn't like sound safe. No, it doesn't. So it doesn't. Tyrus, I think that I like this because it makes pot acceptable you need to divorce it from the stereotype of lazy loser everybody thinks oh he's high he's not too but this is saying no they can do good things right well, let, me, let me see if i get this straight it's a great idea to pick up after yourself yes <laughs> <Like this. laughs> That's what now this is. listen i've i've spent a few hours of my life in the in the weed circle and this is a typical thing that happens when we're all smoking and we got great ideas and stuff we want to do, you know, and I'm more of a world peace guy or like trying to get like an Oreo cookie the size of a pizza, you know, like those. And then there's that one guy like, what if we cleaned up this apartment, bro? What if we, How I get that? what if we cleaned up and then the girl, what if we cleaned up, we organized and we cleaned up all the apartments? Yes. yes. <laughs> yo, so yo, put that online, so put that online. <laughs> And get Funyuns. Like, that's literally... Get Funyuns. Went down. Funyuns. Underrated, uh, DeVito. You think this is a good idea? It, it's not going to work because any trash the potheads pick up will be outweighed by wrappers for food that they've left behind <laughs> yeah. from their own trash. But I disagree with Joe Mackey. I think meth heads are the ones you want. If you go to a meth heads Around place, children? it's so clean. There's no electronics. Yes. There's no furniture. Yeah. It, there's not even a lot of teeth sticking around getting away. <laughs> no, so they no. really, they really run a tight ship. They really do. It really is sparse. They also it's, sell your children for meth money. Like, well, you got your kids laying around. around you yeah. tidy up. <laughs> But I will say, you know, this is the opposite of what drunks do. Because drunk, like, here you have uh, Pothead saying, you know, we're going to, like, we're going to do something good. But, like, when you're drunk, all laws are suspended. Mm -hmm. You know, you're like, uh, you, oh, I'll throw the bottle out the window. You oh. never love me. You never, <laughs> you never love me, bro. Hey, we're on, we're on air, Tyrus. Saying, that's what happens. Why is it always, the drunk guy is always concerned about who loves him. Yeah. <laughs> like, that literally comes out. You never love me. It's like, bro. Yeah. I just want, I just, I think it's, I think it's a, to show initiative is a good thing. And again, it's like, it's going to, the only way pot or marijuana will be acceptable is if they get rid of this stupid stereotype, which they have, you know, from Cheech and Chong. Yeah. I don't know. I'm running but out of shit to But say. it's the truth, though. This is, okay, listen. I, apparently, I guess. I had so many ideas when I used to smoke all the time, but the problem was, eventually the highness wears off, and yeah. we go back to our normal, I'm not doing today. Yeah. So, yeah. the thing about weed is you have great ideas. Yeah. But you yeah. just need something else to take to make you do it. Yeah. So maybe a five hour, or yeah, yeah. like back when cocaine was legal, like something like that. That would be, you would do that, and then you would want to go do stuff. But weed is a thinker's. You just right. don't, yeah, see, you know. alcohol gives you ideas like, I bet I can hit that from here. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right, I bet, I bet I could take that MMA fighter at the bar. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right. Don't go anywhere. Final thoughts to blow your mind next. Mm. Thoughts. It's the last thought. That's why it's called the final thoughts, okay? Uh, uh, Joe. DeVito. Uh, new album's out, Three's Comedy. You can get it on iTunes and Amazon. Fantastic. Great writer. Mackey. Catch me this Friday and Saturday at Levity Live in Nyack, New York. Oh, Nyack. Tyrus. No shameless plugs here, but uh, outside of reading this, I'm going to be wrestling uh, my return to the ring in Minnesota Sunday. Yes. So, uh, yeah. yeah. I just really want to go eat something. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's good. Chicken, perhaps, in a dark room. <laughs> yeah, buy my book. Don't cost nothing. That's a lie. It does actually cost something. <laughs> Thanks to Joe DeVito, Joe Mackey, Captain, Curtis, Studio Audits. I'm GG. I love you.
out there.